Welcome to Robinson Foundry. My name's Seth Robinson, and in this video, I'll be casting the inside of this huge spider conch seashell with molten brass. In a recent video, I showed how I used aluminum to cast the inside of a marlin spike seashell. The casting turned out great, and you all really enjoyed it, so I decided to try again, but this time using a larger shell and filling it with brass instead of aluminum. This is a spider conch shell. I chose this shell because it has these really cool looking spikes, and if everything went as planned, I figured I could re-articulate the parts of the shell onto the casting. The first step was to clean out the inside of the shell as best I could using hot water. I'm glad I did this because look at all the mysterious stuff that came out of it. This is only some of what I managed to clean out. I drilled some small holes to help with washing it out and to help the metal reach all the way down to the end of the internal spiral when it came time to cast. After blowing out as much water as I could with compressed air, I dried the shell in the oven at a low temperature for several hours. It was important to remove every bit of moisture inside of the shell because water and molten metal do not mix. Next, I temporarily plugged the holes with cotton and then started making a sand mold for the shell to sit in. I used this oil bonded metal casting sand called Petrobond because I already had it, but really any sand would work. This reddish sand is just fresh, unburnt Petrobond, which sticks together more easily than the darker, burnt stuff. I used it to create little dams which helped the shell hold as much metal as possible. With the shell ready to be cast, it was time to melt some brass. For this casting, I used some leftover brass from previous projects. Those gear-shaped things are some of my earliest attempts at casting. I filled the crucible with about 6 pounds of brass, which I thought would be more than enough to fill the shell. This amount took about 25 minutes to melt in my homemade keg furnace. Brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, and because it contains zinc, brass can be a little tricky and dangerous to melt. That white smoke is zinc oxide. If you take a breath of that, you'll end up with something called metal fume fever, which causes horrible flu-like symptoms. When melting brass, I always wear a proper respirator. Once the metal is melted, I scraped off the impurities and oxidation that accumulates on top, which is called dross, and then I poured the brass into the shell. I found it interesting how much the shell rose and expanded after being filled. I actually thought the bottom had broken out and spilled metal all over the place, but that didn't happen. I let the casting cool down for a few minutes and then started chipping away the shell to see what the casting looked like. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, it smelled horrendous, like a cross between burning hair and burning seaweed.
I was very happy to see that the metal flowed all the way through the internal spiral structure of the shell. Overall, I was really pleased with how well this casting turned out. It's amazing to me how well the shell held up to 1800 degree Fahrenheit brass. Once the casting was cool enough to handle, I used a pressure washer to blast away what remained of the shell. Then I went to work filing and grinding off the excess metal that had leaked out of the vent hole and a few cracks. Using my die grinder, which is my favorite tool for cleaning up metal, I wire brushed the casting and then polished it with a fine abrasive wheel. To shine up the metal, I used a super fine bristle wire brush, which really did a great job. If you're interested in any of the tools or products I've used in this video, I'll have affiliate links to most of them in the description. I wanted to display this articulated shell on my wall, so I thought mounting it to a piece of mahogany would look really nice. It took a bit of thinking to figure out how I was going to securely mount the shell to the wood backing. After overthinking it for way too long, I ended up just drilling a couple small holes through the brass and wood to loop a few pieces of wire through which ended up working really well. I carefully glued all the fragile pieces of shell onto the casting using 5 minute epoxy and hot melt glue. Some of the pieces were really easy to glue on while others were very difficult and tedious to glue on. I also glued on this little block of wood to prevent the heavy casting from resting on some of the fragile pieces of shell. The shell was finally ready to be mounted to the board I made, so I fed some thin wires through the holes I drilled, pulled them tight, and twisted them together. Well, here it is. I really had no idea whether this project would work out or not. Obviously seashells aren't meant to be filled with metal, but it actually worked really well, and I think it looks nice mounted to the board. The only thing left to do was to hang this crazy thing on my wall. 
Well this was a really fun project and I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for future projects. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I'm always open to new ideas. Thanks for watching.